Our next algorithm in the series is called logistic regression. This is one of the most popular binary self classifiers and basically try, try to classify different categories according to a probability rule. So let me show you an example. So imagine this ideal example. So we have the blue dots and the orange dots. And in this case, classification is pretty simple. Actually, we could draw a line here and we could say, okay, everything that is above that threshold, that point, it's going to be one, otherwise it's going to be zero. Okay, but this is not what happens in reality. In reality, we have, to have something more or less like this. So we have a fuzzy region in which we have some overlapping between the blues and the, and the oranges. So what can we do here? If we try to draw a line here, we're going to, to make a, a classification error. So instead, we're going to use probabilities. So we're going to say, this is orange with this probability, and this is blue with that probability. We're going to use a smooth function, which is going to be 0 and 1 on the extremes, but it's going to be something more continuous in the middle. So this is the function that we are going to use, and I, we're going to try to predict the shape of the function with some predictor, in this case the x. So the, the, the functional format is pretty simple to understand. If x goes to infinity, we would have something like the exponential of infinity divided by the same thing, so this is going to be of the order of 1. If x goes to minus infinity, then this is going to drop to zero. This is, one is going to be one plus zero. So this is going to be more or less zero. So the probability is going to be zero for very low values of x and almost one for very large values of x. Okay, what if we look in the, in the middle? What happened here? So if the exponential here is zero, then we have x to the zero is going to be one, one divided by two, this is going to be one half. And this is going to be the inflection point of this, of this formula. So we, we can use this as a criterion, but changing this level is going to change the prediction. And this is going to be back again to our video on the rock curve. So let's move a little bit forward and you're going to understand that later. So let's do a little bit of math. So we'll take this formula, the probability of y equals 1 being this function. And then after a bit manipulation, actually if we try to solve for the exponential, we're going to have this. This p divided by y minus p is called the odds. And this name comes from gambling. But basically, if you, if you try to do a bet and you say you have your odds 5 to 1, then it's going to say that you have a large probability of winning. So imagine that you have a coin, a fair coin. So in this case, the odds is going to be 1, because you have the same probability of winning and losing. Imagine that your probability of winning is 1, uh, for instance, uh, taking a 1 in or a 6 in, in a throw of a dice. In this case, you have 5 to 1, because you have 5 more chances of losing than winning. Okay, so this is the meaning of the odds. This is borrowed from the world of gambling, so if you go to a betting uh, web page, you see something like this. So for instance, Manchester United versus Crystal Palace, the odds is four, 14 to 1. Okay, so you, you can have an idea of the probability just by looking at the odds. Okay, let's go back to logistic regression and let's try to compare this with traditional linear regression. So we're going to devote a couple of videos on linear regression, but probably you have the main idea. So we're going to define what they call the log transformation, which is the logarithm of the odds. And in this case, if you take the logarithm of this part here, this is a linear function of x. So we're going to do this transformation here. So this is the vertical axis. So now, if you plug a 1 here, then the only solution for this equation is plus infinity. So basically, we're taking all these points in 1 and moving them to infinity. We're going to do the same to minus infinity. And then point 0.5 would be something in the middle. So remember that point 0.5 is the value that you get when the, you have the exponential of 0 here. So point 0.5 is going to be 0 now. Okay? And now, if you apply this to this shape, you're going to have a straight line, which is actually w0 plus w1 times hex. Okay? What happens to our points? As I was saying before, 1 is going to be at plus infinity and 0 is going to be at minus infinity. So what we are going to do here with, lo with logistic regression is basically project this infinity and minus infinity values upon to this curve. So if we take this point, we're, we're going to do a classification not using 1, but using basically the closest one to this line. In this case, if we transform back, then this number is going to transform into a probability between 0 and 1. Okay, in this case, we would say, okay, this is below 0, or in this case, below 0.5, so this is going to be a blue. 
if we take this value here we transform back and then at this point it's going to be there so the probability that this is orange is almost one okay you can see the idea let's try to understand the logit function using r so imagine that we generate a sequence between minus 10 and 10 then we have this function which is called p logis in r so if you plot this function you have this shape you, you can try to understand this using the reverse function the inverse logit using q logis in this case, q log is 0 0.5 is 0, q log is 0 0.99 is going to be not infinity, but l a large value. And q log is of 0.9999, which is closest to 1, is going to be not infinity, but a larger value. So as you can see here, this is a way to translate between real numbers and number of probabilities between 0 and 1. Let's see an example again in R. We're going to use a couple of ways to do that. One is using the caret library, but here we're going to use the glm function. So here basically we are trying to predict y, which is this, this set of points with, which are black or orange. And as you can see here, you see the overlap. And we are going to try to predict y according to this x1. Okay, we, we run this function. I, I will show you that in another video. But here you see that you have this intercept, which is not very interesting. And then x1, you have this coefficient here, which is 9, 9 point, let's say 9.9. .9. And this is a very significant result. So what's the meaning of this number? So basically here we we're trying to fit the logit function. So if you take the exponential of this curve, basically the exponential of 9.897 is going to be around 20,000. So basically this means that increasing from 0 to 1 is going to change the odds from let's say 1 to 1 to 20,000 to 1. So this is a, a sure bet. So I'm going to win the bet if I increase from 0 to 1. Okay, if I increase only from 0 to 0.1, let's multiply this coefficient by 0.1, then the odds are almost 3 to 1. So this is more balanced. So depending on, on the physical or biological meaning of this value, the interpretation is going to change. But as you can see here, you can understand the odds just by taking the exponential of this value. Okay, how can we train a logistic regression if all our values are an infinity or minus infinity? We cannot use a distance function. We cannot use least squares or something like that. So we have to use the likelihood. So basically what we are going to say, going to do is make a prediction. So transform from this infinity and minus infinity to a probability according to this function. And then the likelihood is going to be the probability of getting a one. And the probability of that is the function itself times the probability of getting a zero, which is one minus that probability. We apply this for all the observation, the oranges and the blues, and we obtain this likelihood function. If we change the location of the curve, we're going to, to have different likelihoods. So for instance, the green one is the, the, select the best choice, the, the maximum likelihood estimation. But if we change the location of the curve, we're going to, to have lower likelihoods. So just by moving the parameters W0 and W1, we're going to obtain the, the best choice, and the best choice is the one who maximizes this function. We're not going to do this by hand, so R is going to do that for us, but you can get the idea. We cannot use a distance, we cannot use error here, because the error is going to be infinite. Of course, we can generalize this in a couple of ways, and the simplest way is to generalize this to multiple adjusted regression in which instead of having one variable x1 we have any of them and instead of having one line we have this shape which is a kind of sigmoid but in this two-dimensional space here you have an example so we have the blues and the uh, and the reds and we run a logistic regression and logistic regression means that basically we are trying to draw a line and the line is going to separate between what is above and what is below in this case, we have a lot of false positives and false negatives because the straight line is not the best choice. Of course, we can generalize again the logistic regression and, and create a new variable, which is going to be x1 squared or x1 times x1. We have a new parameter here, and then we're going to draw this like a parabola. And, and as you can imagine, taking a look at these colors, the prediction of, in, of this new logistic regression is better than the original logistic regression. So this is very flexible and you can try to inspect your data and try to generalize it. So this is the end of the video. So what are the pros of logistic regression? So it performs really well. 
but basically th this does it works well when you can do some some linear separation or something that can be generalized properly it's less prone to overfitting than k and n for instance it gives a measure of how relevant a predictor is and, and we have this clear-cut interpretation of, of the coefficients if you take the exponential of the coefficients we immediately have the odds and it's very easy to implement the cons is that the assumption of linearity is very uh, very strong we can relax this a little bit at the new nonlinear predictors that we have done but this is not very straightforward for high dimensional problems it performs poorly if the number of observations are lesser than the number of features it can be used only to predict discrete functions and, and actually generalizations beyond binary outcomes are terrible so basically this works well when we have zeros and ones but it works terribly we have four classes for instance 